Hi, this is Alpha Uzenihar from At Home Tuition. Welcome to our session today. The topic that we are going to discuss in our today's video is Higher Order Derivatives Part 2 video. Let the function y equal to f of x have a finite derivative f dash of x in a certain interval a comma b. That is, the derivative f dash of x is also a function in this interval. If this function is differentiable, we can find the second derivative of the original function y equal to f of x, which is denoted by various notations as these are the various notations for the second differentiation f double dash, f dash of dash, dy over dx of dash, dy over dx of dy over dx and d square y over dx square. Similarly, if f dash x, if double dash exists and is differentiable, we can calculate the third derivative of the function f of x, which is denoted by f triple dash. This can be denoted by d cube y over dx cube also or y raised to triple dash. The result of taking the derivative n times is called nth derivative of f of x with respect to x and it is denoted by this is called in Leibniz notation. Let me write the notation in Lagrange's also. Please see that this is the Lagrange's notation. The number will be written within the parenthesis. So this denotes the order of the derivative. Thus, notion of the nth order derivative is introduced inductively by sequential calculation of n derivatives starting from the first order derivative. Transition to the next higher order derivative is performed using the recurrence formula. Let me give you the recurrence formula. This is the recurrence formula. In some cases, we can derive a general formula for the derivative of an arbitrary nth order without computing intermediate derivatives. Okay, we can consider some examples. Note that I'm going to show you a linear relationship that can be used for finding higher order derivatives. These are the few re linear relationships which can be used for finding higher order derivatives. Please have a glance over this where C is called the constant. Okay, now let me show you higher order derivatives of an implicit function. The nth order derivative of an implicit function can be found by sequential, I mean n times differentiation of the equation f of x comma y which is equal to zero. At each step, after appropriate substitutions and transformations, we can obtain an explicit expression for the derivative, which depends only on the variables x and y. That is, the derivatives have the form y dash equal to f1 of x comma y, y double dash is equal to f2 x comma y. So, y raised to n is f n x comma y. Please make sure that you write the parenthesis here or else it will be considered as y raised to the power. This is not power. This denotes the higher order derivatives. Okay. Now let us see higher order derivatives of a parametric function. Okay. Consider a function y equal to f of x given parametrically by the equations x is equal to x of t and y equal to y of t. The first derivative of this function is given by y dash which is equal to y dash of x equal to y dash of t over x dash of t. Differentiating once more with respect to x we find the second derivative. So it would be this is how the second derivative will look like. So if we keep on differentiating similarly we define the derivatives of the higher order as this is how the nth order will look like. Please have a glance over this. Hope you are clear till this. Okay, now let us see a few examples. Okay, I am going to so show you some solved examples. Here is the first example. We are going to take examples both on implicit functions as well as which is in the parametric form. Okay, here is the first example. Find the nth derivative of the function y equal to ln of ax plus b. Let's calculate the first few derivatives using the chain and power rules. Because we have a function ln and there is an another function ax plus b. So there will be the need of chain rule and power rules for sure. Okay, let us find the first derivative y dash. y dash is going to be 1 over ax plus b. Am I right? Since this is the uh, function within a function, you have to find the derivative of the inner function too. So the derivative of the inner function ax plus b would be just a. So if you simplify it, it would be a over ax plus b. Hope you are clear with the first order. Now let's find for the second one. 
that is going to be you have to find the derivative of y dash so negative 1 times a square because if you shift this to the numerator part this is going to be written in negative exponent am I right so whenever if you shift something from numerator to denominator or denominator to numerator you will be having some change in the exponent since this is a positive exponent term if you shift it to the numerator that is going to be raised to negative 1 the exponent is going to be negative 1 this is the second derivative if you rewrite your expression of this form you can use the product rule or if you just keep your expression in the fraction form then you can use the quotient rule it purely depends upon you you can use the rule according to your convenience after rewriting same way if you keep on doing for the third one and fourth one you can understand that there is a factorial before this so for the second derivative it will be minus one for the third derivative it is going to be two factorial for the fourth derivative it is going to be negative three factorial in the numerator the signs are going to change completely I mean alternately and then the factorial is going to increase so we can easily detect the common pattern so the nth derivative is given by these are the third and fourth derivative now the common the nth derivative is going to be that's it for this example hope you are clear with this example ok now let us move on to the next example where I am going to take a trigonometric function here is the next example find the nth derivative of the function y equal to sine square x ok let us calculate the first few derivatives first derivative y dash is going to be derivative of sine square x which is nothing but 2 sin x and the cos x because we have a function within an another function you are going to use the chain rule here so this is going to be you can see an identity in the trigonometry 2 sin x cos x can be written as sin 2x am I right so it will be easy for you to do the derivatives further so whenever you are dealing with trigonometric functions you have to use the identities wherever possible there are so many uh, identities in the trigonometries cofunction identities half angle double angle and there are so many so whenever you get something which is very closer to identity please make sure that you are going to use the identity to replace it to make your calculation easier so here I am going to replace 2 sin x cos x by sin 2x now let's find the next derivative y double dash so this is going to be cos 2x times 2 cos 2x can be written as sin of 2x plus 90 we cannot use 90 here so I am going to use pi over 2 instead 90 so cos 2x can be replaced by sin 2x of pi over 2 to find the pattern of the derivative you have to find at least 4 derivatives so this is the first one and the second one now I am going to find the third as well as fourth derivative so that is going to be so these are the third and fourth derivatives we used here co-function identities these are called the co-function identities cos alpha equal to sin alpha plus pi over 2 minus sin alpha is sin alpha plus 2 hope you remember that it is easy to detect the pattern now so if you keep on rewriting using the co-function identities you can easily identify the pattern so the nth derivative is going to be so this is the nth derivative 2 raised to n minus 1 sin 2x plus pi n times over 2 where n is equal to 1 to 3 hope you are clear with this example so all the examples that we are discussing in this video is to generalize the pattern for the nth derivative ok let me take one more example I am going to take using the e exponential here is the next example find the nth derivative of the function y equal to x times e raised to x at x is equal to 0 ok we differentiate successively using the product rule because two functions x and e raised to x are multiplied so we are going to use the product rule here so we are going to find first second and third derivative continuously and then we can write the generalized pattern the first derivative is going to be you have to use the product rule please make sure that you are using that formula here since there is e raised to x on both the terms I have taken it outside as the common factor and return the leftovers within the parenthesis now let us find the second derivative similarly if you take the e raised to x again you will be 
left over with 1 plus 1 plus x which is nothing but x plus 2 am I right so second derivative is going to be hope you are clear so far same way let us find the third derivative in this example you need not find the fourth derivative because just by doing till the third derivative itself you can understand the pattern so the third derivative is going to be again I am going to use the product rule because the answers that I am getting for the derivatives are again product so here is also a product this is also a product so now the third derivative is going to be so what I am getting is e raised to x x plus 1 e raised to x x plus 2 e raised to x x plus 3 so the number you can relate this number with the derivative for the third derivative the number is 3 for the second derivative the number is 2 for the first derivative number is 1 so based on this the nth derivative is going to be that's it for this example hope you are clear with this pattern ok in case if you get any query regarding this video you can let me know see you in the next video have a great time ahead